I don't want to do all my topics. This shit is no way. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they've been hitting me all week trying to get me to say this. Or not say this, but um, get at this. All right. <clears throat> so let me give you a quick explanation real quick of what's going on in the music industry, okay? <clears throat> um, Kevin Lyle steps down. Okay, let me explain from here and then, you know, we could kind of go on to other things. All right, chat, what's, what's very important that you should know when trying to evaluate what's going on in the music industry, why the executives are stepping down. Kevin Lyles was the guy who, uh, <clears throat> first, let me start off with 300 Entertainment. Former heavyweights in the game, Todd Motzkowitz, Lior Cohen, and Kevin Lyles, they came together and created a uh, label called 300 Entertainment. The motto around 300 Entertainment was supposed to be, hey, you don't need a huge label. You could be almost kind of quasi-indie, have a smaller staff, smaller uh, number of artists, and still do big numbers. Um, they started this label. Y'all should remember Shy Glizzy, Migos at first. You should remember... Fetty Wap, you should remember um, who else, who else, who else, who else? I believe Rich the Kid was there. This was the early, uh, and obviously subsequently Young Thug, and obviously YSL. Uh, the, if if you remember this time, it was a very important time. Now, Leo Cohen is, is very important for coining the 360 deal. Eventually, Leo Cohen saw the writing on the wall that really tech companies are running the industry. Tech companies are the new labels. So he still maintained his ownership stake in 300, but he went to be the head of YouTube. He's still the head of YouTube. That was around the time when Young Thug started to be able to learn how to walk on his own, learn how to ride a bike. Todd Moskowitz dropped out of 300 Entertainment. He went to create his own label, a label called Alamo. That label then becomes synonymous with, you know, um, Gucci 1017, like the uh, um, Icy or something Ice like label. Didn't really hear anybody. The two people who kind of popped that off, or the one in particular that Rod Wave made Alamo. Alamo Records, Rod Wave made it. Okay? So, by the way, Rod Wave is still under Alamo, which I think Alamo now has a deal. I don't know if it's Interscope or where else it's at. It might be it's only. I don't know. Anyway, I'm telling you where these executives go. So 300 starts with three executives. Lear goes to YouTube. Tom Moskowitz goes to Alamo. Kevin Lyle stays at uh, th uh, at um, 300. Now, remember when I told you that when Gunna came back, after the news that 300 was being acquired by Warner, Gunna was going to be under Warner, uh, was going to be under Atlantic. And some people say, oh, I don't know what he's talking about. These were rumors where, again, I don't speak to second-in-command pencil pushers. I don't speak to peons. I only speak to bosses. So I speak to people who sometimes, if if when I'm speaking and I'm giving out information, if you even are in the industry, and this is why I had to sun that little nigga DJ head, if I tell you something about your mama and you don't know, maybe your mama don't trust you to tell you, but I'm telling you what's going on. So sometimes I tell you things that people in the industry don't all the way know yet, it ain't always it ain't, it ain't all the way happened yet or it's in the works and only a few people know. Don't ask me how I know the shit, but I know the shit. Remember when I said Gunner was going to end up on Atlantic? You know what's happened today? Or not today, it's happened recently. Atlantic, remember I told you all their problems? How did I know that? I told you all their problems. Didn't I tell you that all the executives lined their pockets, starved the artists, dropped all of them, the meat mills, all of these niggas, they all got dropped. Young boy had to leave like Kodak. Did I tell you that? Told you that, right? Why did I tell you that happened? Warner Music went public. All them executives supposedly a hundred million a piece. That's the number. Print it, write it. Nobody would say I'm, I'm lying because I'm seeing speaking facts. So the executives lines their pockets, dropped all the artists. Atlantic is looking abysmal, looking trash. And someone who's very smart realized a move could be made. Didn't I already tell you and I gave you this story about the industry about nepotism? Didn't I say who's the leader of the biggest um, 
uh, um, music conglomerate, UMG, Universal Music Group, a guy you hear Drake rap about, other people talk about, Lucian Grange, who is his son? Didn't I say his name is Elliot Grange? By the way, how do I know some of this too? You know I got a joint venture with the nigga. Shout out to my man Lucian. Shout out to Sam. Shout out to Homemade uh, Records uh, uh, over there. Um, Y'all been doing a good thing. I'm not just speaking on my ass, people, right? Did I tell you that I created a little act not only to show people I can have fun, but to show, but I, I didn't want people to talk about me like how they talk about Stephen A and these niggas like I never had to, I was never in the league. I went to drop a record. I signed a record deal. I didn't only sign a record deal. I signed a deal for a JV. You get what I'm saying? I have a label. I made sure that whatever I'm talking about, I got actual experience with it. I had to deal with my lawyers. I wanted to be well-versed in what I'm talking about. This is why I know most of the things I know. But, but not only that, I'm also speaking um, as a person who nobody could call and be like, yo, why'd you tell him that? You're fine. No, don't happen like that. All these people, you know, lucky I'm in a position where, let's call it, we work together. So 10K projects. And by the way, ironically, this affects me too. Matter of fact, I know it affects me because Warner sent me an email today saying, the Academy Records, we need your vendor information to pay you out. I haven't taken pay payment from, from 10K for years. I, I I dropped the little act thing after that. I haven't, because I haven't signed anybody. Like, And I don't want people to give me a loan. I could get millions of dollars from them, but I don't want a glorified loan. Because you know what? You're going to, not necessarily they're going to like say pay it back, but now you're indebted to somebody. And I'm not that committed to dropping music, just honestly, right? But anyway... I got the news, 10K, which was independent at first, but it went through his father's conglomerate, UMG, then C Capital. 10K does a deal with Warner. And I always tell y'all, the difference between music, the big conglomerate music labels and the little rinky-dink rappers who think they got to shoot each other to get the up on whatever competition they got is that Universal Music Group, Warner Music Group, and Sony Music Entertainment, they all work together. Okay, they all make money together. So you know what happened? The son of the most powerful guy in the universal umbrella takes his independent label, which I have a deal over there. 10K, by the way, 6 9 signed to 10K. Trippy, 10K. Ice Spice, 10K. Who else? This is a bunch of people. Takes that, takes 10K and does a deal because it was an indie label. Remember, he would have to work his way up the ranks to get to, to succeed his father. It's going to take a long while because he started late. But he said, nah, I'm going to do it by being a being an independent label and showing y'all proof. Look at this. Internet money, success. Look at this. 6 9 success. Look at this. Trippy, success. So he's doing this independently even though the independent is looking a little bit more than independent. If, if you get my drift, okay? You know what I'm saying. Hey, the next play for him, you got to get to the top spot. Now, the only way you got to go run a label that is in dire need of repair, the label everybody was talking about that's historic is Def Jam. Def Jam been trash for a long time. They don't have no new artists. Like, I think at one point they were touting that YSL, or no, YK Osiris was their big deal. Come on. So they needed saving. However, ultimately... I forgot, I forgot the name of the gentleman who actually took that job, but he that's his project to fix. What's the next thing? Well, ironically, at the same time, Warner goes public. Everybody's cashing out. They dropped a shit ton of artists, meet all these people. And then Atlantic now looks garbage. By the way, every new drill rapper, every new Hispanic rapper, they're all signed to Capital. Capital's getting all of them. So who becomes the label that is impoverished? Atlantic Records. Okay, cool. Brilliant play here. Take 10K that you've built up, Ice Spice and all these like, you know, assets to be like, oh my God, you got the newest, well, and uh, it, it, it's sexy, no, sexy is not going through there. I'm sorry. Anyway. Grab that situation. Bring it over to Warner. Now, theoretically, you would think, well, Warner and Universal are, 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 are like competitors. It's not like two fucking stupid rappers shooting each other. No, it's not that same, right? So you bring your label over there and then Atlantic or really Warner Music Group says, "Ah, well, our our executives are lining their pockets. They're all on the on the outs. It's the big play. Yo, these executives are getting two, three, four million dollars a year. The company goes public, and you get a hundred million dollars. 
peace the fuck out, nigga. That's what happens, okay? So they, they were already on the way out. Elliot Grange go over there with 10K. He says, I could bring my label. They offer him the job. What we now have is Atlantic Music Group that falls under Warner Music Group. You know what's in Atlantic Music Group? 10K Projects with Elliot, Elliot Grange owns. Who now runs Atlantic Records? Elliot Grange. 300. Remember I said Gunna, if he was going to leave uh, YSL, YSL is directly tied to 300. He would be maybe Atlantic. What's under Atlantic Music Group? 300. And some other some other uh, um, uh, um, record company called Electra. So there's a newly formed new method um, Atlantic Music Group that is going to be the foreseeable future of what Warner is going to put up, put out on a uh, on a um, um, urban conscious or not urban content level. So if you're wondering why executives are leaving, well, they've already absorbed three hundred. They don't need Kevin Lyles. It's probably in Kevin Lyles' best interest to cash out because when, when, when 300 went there, it, it required him to be there be there in a, in, a, in a managerial positions for a certain point. What I'm saying is that I know y'all want to con, uh, um, conflate this with Diddy, but, every, but this is the music business. Niggas cashed out. They're leaving. In the last 18 months, a lot of people have lost faith in the streaming forecast of this industry. Also, the bigger labels are saying, let's downsize, consolidate. So remember you used to say Atlantic Records? Well, you're saying Atlantic 310K Electra. That's a music group now. We don't need all these executives. You, you could go. You, you could go. Julie Greenwald, you got your hundred. You could go. You could go. You could go. Everybody is cleaning house. The, the, the industry is preparing for, I won't call it a recession, but if I had to put it in layman's terms, the recession. Consolidate, get them out of here. What's also happening? Artists who are just sitting ducks, get them out of here. We have a new, new leader, uh, Elliot Grange. We have a new infrastructure, and we now have everything is folding up. We don't need... This amount of, of A&Rs just on Atlantic when we got this amount of A&Rs on 300. Let's take the top 50 of the best. The rest of y'all, you're fired. That's what works. You're fired. Go go build a house. Go dig a, go dig a grave. Go go paint a house. That's, that's just how it's working right now. You're fired. Until the music industry starts banging. And, and by the way, this comes in cycle because music will never go nowhere. But right now... Like people are in the yo is streaming stalling bag. Everybody got to go fired, fired. Not everybody getting fired. If somebody got fired, not an executive. Executives don't go out like that. So when you see Kevin Lyles say quit, he ain't get fired. That boy walked away with hundreds of millions of dollars. Line the pocket. He he's getting money. Lior is getting money. Facts. Now for them A and R's, them digital people. Then people working radio, then people who was just clearing. Yeah, yo, we're not just gonna have a staff of all of y'all for no reason. Yeah, fired, fired. You can stay. Fired, 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 fired. You stay. Again, downsizing, consolidating, downsizing. Okay, that's essentially what's happened to the music industry. Kevin Lyles, he gets to walk away with some. He, he's walking away with with line in his pockets. Um, he's resigning because Warner Music. Again, look, they had him as the, the, the 300 electric chair. Well, here's the thing. They just merge 300 and Electra with Atlantic. So now Atlantic is AMG, Atlantic Music Group. Okay? Everybody think it's because of Diddy. No, it's a money play. Kevin Lyles is going to pop back up. You know, it's, the same, it's the same horse and pony store. He's going to pop up with another independent label. Remember, 300 was supposed to be the, the indie version of, yo, you get the, the, the major expertise where you're indie. 300 is owned by motherfucking Warner now. It's owned by the majors. So you know what Kevin Lyles is going to do? Go lay low, go find some funding, because you know rule number one. 
especially in the, in the music business. Never spend your own money. This, you know, Dame Dash used to get mad at niggas for that. Never spend your own money. Go get some funding. Give them a little bit of equity, but equity that you can leverage because now they're going to be your partner so you can leverage them for whatever you need to. Start another record label, build it up, get a couple more stars, and sell that bitch again. Sell the catalog. Get a couple hundred more million dollars. Might take another eight or seven years, but that's it. Rinse and repeat. They don't give a fuck about Diddy. You know, they think that these niggas is care about Diddy? Here's another thing y'all won't, won't realize. Diddy has been inconsequential in the music business in at least five to ten years. Diddy has not affected the music business. Diddy has affected culture. Diddy has affected black culture specifically. But Diddy been selling liquor. Diddy don't got nothing to do with music. Even Diddy's albums are flopping. Diddy don't got nothing to do with nothing. His catalog... From way back, Biggie's catalog, any bad boy owned catalog at this point is going to be what it's going to be. He ain't put out a hot artist in mad long. So I know y'all want to think that, oh, Diddy going down means these guys are leaving. Now, we should probably wonder why there's a lot of moving parts and really CEOs and big executives, not only in, not only in, in, in music, Really in, in um, entertainment and really in these big companies. There's other financial implications where people and, and, the, and what you're seeing is that these industries are preparing for what they think is a recession. So when people think the market is going to keep increasing, they spend more, hire more. Because they think it's going to come back tenfold because you're growing. When they think that they are not growing or that people are becoming tighter with money, they got to trim the fat and start getting low. They got to prepare for the winter. That's kind of what's happening. So I know y'all want to think Diddy is the reason all this shit is happening. No. Now, I will say this. There is a possibility that maybe some executives with checkered past that we haven't found out about, they're caught up in the midst. What I'm saying is that we're seeing dozens. And the reason for the dozens isn't Diddy. Now, is there an executive or two that maybe their their record company or whatever role they had at some company is saying, yo, you know, we've been served with like four civil suits of you doing some freaky ass nigga shit. Shit, Diddy just went down. It's probably getting closer to you being exposed and it's going to hurt our business. So... Let's do the severance package now, because if we wait until you get exposed and this is a very, very like you got to think about this. If we wait till you get exposed, there is no severance package. So and you're going to be seen as fired in, in the in executive games. You rarely see fired. You see step down and resign. You get what I'm saying? So they, they there is probably a few. Now, I can't tell you who do I think like uh, um, Kevin Lyles. I don't think so. So there's probably one or two in the midst like, oh, OK, this person is stepping down. They've probably been served with a couple lawsuits or like negotiations like, yo, we finna sue you. We want this amount of money. And they've been trying to like angle and posture. And now they realize, oh, shit, it's about to probably come out because right now, if you're a woman that's going to file a lawsuit against an executive, you want to put it out now because you're the most believable now. Right now, you're the most believable in against, against an executive. So if you ever got touched by your executive, shit, you might, you, I'm not surprised if if some failed R&B singer put out something against maybe a label owner saying, yo, they they they, they, they suppressed my career because I ain't sucked a dick. Like, that might happen. This is the time for that. So, yeah, everybody's preparing for a cold winter. Also, there is some turnover. Half of these people you see get let go, none of them are going nowhere. The music industry is like the most stagnant game in terms of executives. All you see is musical chairs. I'm pretty sure Junie Greenwell will pop up somewhere else. I'm pretty sure Kevin Lyles will pop up. They're going to pop up with new ventures, new labels, new situations, and they're going to run the gig again and sell and finesse and move this and Bring catalog here and get another couple hundred million dollars. That is the game. Okay. So um, this Kevin Lyles thing 
is more indicative on probably you got you remember when Warner acquired it Warner acquired it in um in, in look okay it acquired in 2021 let me see if I can find it look okay so it says December 18th cool we could probably m match it to the date. Like, bro, this is like mad. Look, Kevin Lyles. Look. It says he's stepping down. Hold on. Oh, on September 30th, he, he's departing. Yeah. Whatever his contract is, it's probably said he had to stay on after the, the step down for three years. That, that's how most of these things are done, Chad, if you don't know. They... Their pockets got lined because the shit got sold for four hundred million already. The shit got sold for four hundred million dollars already. He stayed on for like what was it that would, this would make like uh, three years because it was in twenty twenty one. Yeah, three years. He stayed on for three years after. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. By the way, you know what I think that's going to happen too, and y'all better not get mad when it happened to the, to him either. When. P from QC does the same. He's going to do the same, I think. Oh, hey, all right. Yeah, as part of me selling QC, QC sells. As part of me selling for QC, because you know P is still running it, but technically they sold it. Hey, part of that deal says you got to still be the CEO and find talent for the next Probably two, three years. So he probably is going to run this bitch for another two years. And then, watch, all y'all going to say this. This mark this video. We're going to be in 2026 when y'all watching this next. Yo, nah, baby and then must be over because P leaving. No, then they get cashed out and he, he did the time that the deal required him to stay on with the label. And now he about to go make a new label with another partner. Him, Coach K, and I don't know, Gotti. If Gotti sells before, it probably won't be like that but um, because those are like powerhouses. But still. Yeah, just keep flipping this shit. Look, $250 million in cash. Oh, my God. Good job. And $50 million in stock. Stock that probably, you know, has, you know, certain type of, it probably incentivized for them to stay on for those two years or three years, right? Yeah, chat. All right, man. Chat, I made to eight hours. Um, if you do want me to get into specific, there is a bunch of like people leaving their companies in the center. We could absolutely get into those later. If, if you have any ones that are more, um, there is a lot of stories to be told about this musical chairs stuff that's being played. The industry is in a really weird space, man. And I'm telling you these labels, you know, for, for new artists, I'll give you this advice. They're not trying to sign no bullshit right now. They're trying to sign people with leverage. They're, even though it's not to their benefit because they're going to have not the best deals, but they want to sign shit that works. They feel like the music industry is about maxed out and um, and not maxed out, like really maxed out, but it's just like the, the majority of the money is coming or, or the, the, the majority of the royalties up front is coming through streaming and the streaming companies are telling them, yo, we've stagnated. And they're like, what the fuck? They exist in a world where it's all about we did a hundred last quarter, let's do a hundred and five, let's do a hundred and fifteen, let's do a hundred and thirty, continuing going on. And when they're hearing shit stalled, it means no more no more need to invest in growth, downsize and just do the bare minimum to continue. That's not a good thing for the culture. And for new musicians, because they're 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 less likely to take chances. They're less likely to have more um, um, uh, um, personnel at these labels, whether it's uh, um, executives, you know, usually it's the VPs or whatever, or even um, A and Rs or whatever, and 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 all around. So this is a trickle down effect. All right, people, thank y'all, man. Been rocking for eight hours. I'll be back on tomorrow. Uh, I do genuinely and solemnly appreciate it and thank you guys for all your support. Um, hopefully, you guys were thoroughly entertained. There's been a, so many of you guys who who st stood around for the entire broadcast. Please, we have one item sold out, which is just the pants. Please go to theacademy.shop. This is the way you can show me your support. 
please go to the academy.shop. We have a bunch of items here that you could buy. You could buy a keychain for just as little as eight dollars. Okay, a little keychain. Okay, gotta have the 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 chat nigga scorpion keychain. You could have the compromise shirt. Um, I love this shirt right here. This is my favorite right here. I love the spider right here. I do like it. Um, you could have a little air freshener. I know some of y'all cars be stinking. Okay, got an OG chat nigga hoodie. We got that going on. Go, go down, scroll, and hit others. You, know, you could get a jersey, a little beanie for the winter. You could get one of these shot glasses, if you don't know. Get a hat. Um, actually, this is one of the hats, too. Is this the one on sale? The Scorpion one. This is, this is actually one of our products as well. But you could get the Academy one, um, this one. And there's a few shirts here that probably weren't sold before. You guys could. Ooh, the Keep It A Bean one is there. Oh, I need to wear this one. Okay. All right, Chad. I, I do appreciate you guys, though. Uh, let me read finally any um, any donations that maybe I've missed. <laughs> okay, what the hell? Why the hell it look like that? I don't know why I can't read it on the Academy page. That's not cool. By the way, we are a hundred and forty thousand subs away on King Academics from. A million, we are headed there, and I appreciate you guys so much for rock with me. Okay, let me just read these donations really quickly. All right, JD, thank you for the five. He said, Accurate cover's been great. LOL, bro. They said in DR, they say you smash Gigi. But that was my ex girlfriend. Like, what? <laughs> they call it, they call it Angelica Gigi down there. Apparently, she's lit. <laughs> Rhett reacts. Thank you for the three. Um, Professor Splash. Thank you for the two. He says Drake and Raw Wave new song. Oh, I didn't go over to what? Oh my God, yo! Tomorrow, what's the dirt? Tomorrow, we tomorrow we gotta get into what's the dirt. We're just eight hours in, bro. Like eight hours, like fuck. <laughs> like I don't even get a lunch break, bro. Like tomorrow, what's yeah? What's the dirt? We're we're gonna go through the what's the dirt video. The breakdown of family matters and a couple of other drama um, affiliated things that he has going on. Bozo, he says, yo, act, how is he so rich? He ain't a no successful movie or comedy special. He does good comedy videos, but that's about it. Kevin Hart is in 100 million dollar movies. You're talking about um, Juski? Juski is super brand friendly. You get what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, that's why, he, me, I would have cussed Ruby Rose all the fuck out. Like, I would have said, you fucking scallywag, you piece of, like, I would have wilded out on her. But I'm not that brand friendly compared, like, he's all the way brand friendly, like, He's getting the bag for being brand friendly. He's in commercials. He's, you know, like a lot of these things come his way um, and well-deserved too. But yeah, JD says, this is true. You dated the Gigi. Yo, this is so crazy. Yo, it's, yo, I remember Angelica called me and she was telling me how lit she is in the DR. I'm like, shut your stupid ass up. This nigga isn't really my chat, like, like donating saying, is it true you dated Gigi? I'm like, what? <laughs> I guess she's, yo, Angelica's lit now in the DR, like lit. <laughs> Shout out to Angelica, though. Shout out to her. <laughs> Tell me why Angelica called me the other day. I swear. She called me the other day, and she was just like, yo, she was bragging on me. She says, yo, I passed you in followers. Like, my personal page, she said she passed me in followers. She's like, yeah, you never thought I was going to be a star. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> anyway, shout out to Angelica. Like, it's all love. Um, Lil Cum Guzzler, pause. What type of name is this? You say, yo, stop speaking on me, you big and tasty. What the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, B, it says, Hip Hop News Uncensored um, has a podcast with Judge Joe Brown speaking on Kamala playing a part in Diddy's case. Oh, wow. Trap Thoughts, thank you. It says, at Candace Owens recently leaked, said a leak Kim Porter book will be published. But yeah, nobody knows who has the book. Like, I, I think she was speaking on rumors that happened to be false, actually. We'll see, but we haven't got any verification. Easy Money Sniper says, yeah, before Drake and Kendrick, Ak disliked Cole and Kendrick because they only cared about the music, not the fame and drama, so Ak considered them boring. Uh, not for that. <coughs> and I, I, I dislike them for that. <coughs> My biggest critique of both of them was that they barely put out music. But yeah. Both of them said, the craziest thing is that Drake is now older than Joe Button when... Then Joe Button was when the Drake beef happened. Wow, interesting. Johnny Sark says, actually, you should have taken your original advice after that to take five to six months to reply. I do think that would have made a change, but it's Aubrey, man. 
Bozo said, like that is higher on the Billboard than any of the 15 songs Drizzy dropped and his Kendrick This Is Too. 70 monthly listeners can't and can't stay in the top 40. Just Millie, he fell off, bro. I don't think Drake fell off. Johnny Stark says, yo, Drake needs to keep his circle smaller. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's small enough. I don't, he don't trust nobody. Like, Drake, stop even talking to these industry niggas. Like, yeah, his circle's pretty small. Um, Taser RT says, Ack, we don't care for Kendrick as a person. There's a reason why he only has buzz when mentioning Drake. That is a good... Why don't we ever talk about... Every time we talk about Kendrick, we immediately talk about Drake. So we never seen a Kendrick fan page before this year. That's definitely a fact. Ebony Smith, hey, thank you, girl. Uh, let me add some of this to my, my, my tomorrow topics. Yeah, we're going to have to get back into Jonathan, Jonathan Odie, yes. Uh... What's the dirt and what's the other topic I said I'm gonna get into tomorrow? Drake and Rod Wave song, yeah, yeah. Drake Rod Wave song, okay. <laughs> Koki's Casino said, uh, says, "Ah, you got a wrong process for men." Um, Hoodie Mo twenty three, think of it a ten. He says, "Your act." The only time I ever used baby oil was. Only time I would ever use baby oil is if I get a lotto. Damn, like, what's the appeal of baby oil? I don't get it. Um, DD758 says, act, look up Diddy kissing his mother on the list. Oh, well, we played that. And her painting her nail white. Cassie did say Diddy had women paint their nails white for the free coughs. Do you think his mom was involved? Ew, let's not even think about that. Please, please. Tall Angel says, the government desperate to cancel the 304 industry. From this case on, it's going to be harder to deal with these women. Yeah, there's always a cause and effect. Yeah, uh, you know, unfortunately, I do have to say, I think, like, I forgot what happened with some artists. Trust me, the industry is going to start signing less women because they're going to see this liability. And granted, I I'm with y'all. If you're not doing no freaky or weird shit, you shouldn't think like that. But people, like, this be getting the whole industry on, on like, really, like, like, they nervous. Like, they really don't even want, like, shit. I'm going to be honest with you. I think, myself personally, I think Yachty had to get out in front of the whole thing with, with Shorty. Uh, what's her name again? Carol Boo? Because she's a female. I think he dealt with her like that because she's a female. You know why? Because, God forbid, you know, when she was saying bullying, God forbid she started saying, oh, they were sexually harassing me or making like bro like you could face all type of stuff so that does have a trickle down effect to people being scared or not want to take in the chance of signing a female artist it's already a point where people look at female artists like they cost more like they gotta you gotta spend a lot more money it is what it is um they're saying act check his mug shot they're saying one of diddy's many body doubles is in jail and said mug shot missing facial features like moles no shape etc is, is there a mug shot for diddy yet um, Betta Believes Me says there's a witch hunt for a successful black man. He's a freak and a weirdo, but don't let the gov the government fool y'all. He ain't do nothing Hugh Hefner has not done for he decades. I'm going to put Hugh Hefner on my list for tomorrow. We, we should get into that because I've heard some people make the Hugh Nef Hefner point. Sub-Zero TV says I'd like to know what Diddy Baby Mamas have to say about all of this. I mean, I don't think they would say anything publicly. I mean, shoot, their kids are probably sad that their father is incarcerated buzz and vine says can i get a hallelujah hallelujah man um south dudan says i cure bias against diddy am i do i come across as that i feel like some people say like i'm i'm, I'm too favorable like i'm also kind of given maybe a potential side of his that some people feel is not warranted they feel like fuck him right um big chris says could you get the commissary list from mdc and see if they got baby all on there oh my god Crypto Diano says the guy posted Diddy with every other celebrity, but but the many he took with Trump. So even Epstein with Trump. If you're gonna put everyone else, him too. What? Oh, they're saying, oh, look at Diddy with every celebrity, but they didn't put him with Trump. So Donnie Stark mentioned Jonathan Odie. We're gonna talk about him tomorrow, okay? Um, Mr. Gamer. By the way, I had heard that Jonathan Odie was was down to do an interview at a point, but it felt like it was irrelevant. Um, because there was just new allegations popping up. Um, it, it, he sounds a lot important now, don't he? Act talk about Lucian Grange funding Diddy parties and using his position in mainstream media to hide that he's involved. That's why there's no bail. I have no idea uh, about that. And shoot, if, if he's funding it, 
shit, I'm pretty much sure Diddy would snitch on him, right? Like, oh, yeah, it's a time to snitch, right? Um, Johnny Stark, thank you for the donation again. We're going to cover Jonathan Odie. Um, Johnny Stark, Stark says, could you talk about drug withdrawal? I feel like we did for a little bit. And um, Alfred says, yo, act, why, did, why is Diddy collecting celebrity freak-off tapes like the Infinity Stones? We haven't heard about any names with that or if he actually threatened people with a videotape. We've already threatened maybe women that he recorded, but never other men that were supposedly uh, um, um, powerful as well. And Johnny says, W, Big Act, thank you for your work ethic. I want to thank you. Um, yeah, appreciate all you guys. Uh, Professor Splash, you, you sent in your 20th donation today. Trust me, it goes much appreciated. Koki's Classic, that was your 20th donation. I appreciate you so much as well. All right, chat, love all you guys. Uh, thank you guys for all the subscribers. We're trying to get to 1,000 subs to get the 1,000 bottles of baby oil. Maybe I could line up. Actually, fuck, no, I wouldn't. That might be a smoke signal for the feds to try to come over here. <laughs> Hell no. All right, though, chat, I'll be back on tomorrow. We have some preliminary topics. If you have anything I didn't get to, please just hit me with a DM. Um, let me know that I could add it to the list that we could have a full stream tomorrow. You know, every time when I do like eight, nine hours sometimes i feel like we don't have topics for the next day but if you have things in I definitely there are things